Okay, so there's your pansies. Now, entirely up to you how many of these you make. There will be time to make at least three um, in class and some foliage as well. And I am going to show you how to put it together into a little uh, tiny little pot. This is just a, a five centimeter, two inch pot, diameter wise, probably the same. Yeah, five, two inch. Um, and often the garden centers have these. But I mean, anything like that, you could actually make it out of sugar and have a little mini cake inside, or you could even have a cupcake and carve it, couldn't you, um, to make it all look very real. Uh, you've got a choice. You can use 28 gauge wire or 26 gauge wire. There, the 28s we'll definitely be using for the leaves, but you might find the 26 would be more robust to hold the stems. OK, uh, so I'm going to use 26. If you've got 24, you could use that might be a little bit chunky, I don't know, um, give it a go. So this we need to bend a hook into and you'll want one stem per flower. So if we make three, if we prepare three and then if you want to work a little bit, you know, if you are working a little bit quicker then you can make more. But we're just going to close up a little hook. That's what's going to embed into the, the flower heads. And we'll just get a little bit of tape on there already, because then we don't have to worry about fiddling with the flower once it's all together. I would say probably the, because these flowers are pulled uh, the same as a lot of the flowers that we've made, the primroses, buttercup, periwinkle. A lot of the flowers that we've learned uh, this year are just using that five, six sided cone tool. Um, you're just going to want to spend a bit more time on this because it's probably the most complex one out of all of them. Um, so let's just tape. You don't have to tape all the way down. But I, put, I, I have done. So I've just left the hook bare at the end and we've taped from the top here. Uh, depending on how much stem you want to show because this is superbly long. If you're working with the 28 gauge wires and they're probably cut into thirds anyway, that's absolutely fine. And if you've got a 26, that will be possibly half cut or you can cut that into thirds. So let's do three of those. So to make the violet or world pansy, I'm just going to take a centimetre ball of sugar flour paste. Just make sure it's nice and crack free and warmed up. Roll it into a smooth ball and then into a cone shape. A little bit of corn flour on your fingers just so it doesn't stick. And then take hold of the pointy end and push in the five sided pointy part of the tool. So the extra pointed end that's the six sided that will make bluebells things like that or six petals we want the five petal side so we're just going to push that right into the center so find the, the middle with the tip of the tool and then push in and press just gently around i've gone into about here so about halfway and then we can pull that back out again to reveal my little markings. And using my pointed nail scissors, I'm just going to cut in to divide the petals. So when you snip, push the point of the scissors into as far as you pressed in with the tool, so about halfway. And that will give you your five petals and they're nice and long. I'm just going to round these off. Now the process for this is it's not lengthy, but it is maybe longer than it's going to take you to do. So it might be a good idea just to watch this before you have a go. So a little bit of corn flour on my fingers just to stop it from sticking. And once I've rounded off the each petal sideways, I can then turn my finger and thumb. So my fingers on the top, thumbs underneath, and I'm just pressing. So this is the process we've followed for the majority of the flowers that we've made in this way. So now when I look at the flower, um, most of the petals are even, but 
If I find that I've got two fat ones, then if I'm lucky, they'll be on, actually, here, let's do it a different way. Find the fattest one and put that down the bottom. So that one is gonna flare out on its own. And then these two are the arms or the legs the wings, if you like, and these two are the arms. So you can see on a pansy, you've got five petals, a fat one at the bottom, the side arms and the top two. Fat on the bottom side, top two. So if you have got a fattest one, that's gonna be at the bottom. And we could start by flaring that one out. So a little bit of corn flour onto your finger. Now I'm left-handed. So if you're right-handed, you're going to want to put that on your left knuckle to roll. So this is my fattest petal going on here. And either with your silk veining tool with some corn flour, you can touch the middle of the shape. And with the point of the shape facing up behind you towards the corner of your room, you're going to press one way to flare and then the other way to flare. If you haven't got corn flour, sometimes this is a bit prone to sticking. So what we haven't done is actually thinned this area here. We're only really interested in flaring out this part. So hopefully that will come off my finger without tearing. Uh, so we've gone from super dry on the paste to a little bit warm and sticky. The atmosphere today is humid. So the minute it rains, we know we've got a bit of a problem with the paste or it's just gonna be more of a challenge. You can see what's happened now, I've actually torn it. So I'll move on to show you these other flowers, the other petals, but um, I'll come back to this in a moment and we can trim it. So we do the same here, we're gonna flare out. So these are the fat side petals. Put corn flour on each time if your hands are sticky. So I'm going to come to the other side. It just helps me try and, try and match the size of the petal I've just created. More corn flour. And then let's do the top ones. So again, these can be a similar size. Try and match top two. And try and match the side two. Okay, so now we've got this. Now on here, it is thicker in the middle, so I might be able to rescue this, I might not. But what I would normally do if, to give it a go, we'll just cut this a little bit on both sides. And then if I go back to the flaring and maybe come more onto the petal, I can actually roll it. I could roll some length there and flare again. So we can rescue it without having to remake it. Not all the time, but it's good if you can. Now, if your center has closed up, just use the back of a paintbrush or the back of this tool and support the back with your fingers and push in to create the hole. Now I'm looking at these petals and they don't look thin enough. So I'm just gonna go back and thin. You could actually thin them on the, on the foam pad. That's another possibility to um, make them look a bit more frilly as if they would blow in the wind. Okay, so the top two petals here, they're going to just be brought a little bit together. The side petals are gonna come in and slightly overlap these two. Okay, so these two are at the back. These two are fronts. 
at the side. And then this one, we're gonna just ruffle up a little bit. So that is the shape of your pansy or your, yeah, your wild pansy. Now at the back, we want just a little point. So you can just pinch between your finger and thumb and roll so that you get a little peak. And the next bit, putting the wire in is the weirdest thing. So to start with, I'm not gonna put any glue because I just want to fix this into place. But what we're gonna do is take the flower so that you've got the top two here. We push the wire, go in, but then you're coming up. So you're actually coming out through the back in between the top two. So go in a little way. So you go into a fleshy part of the paste and then you come up through Give it a little twist as it hits the tape if you haven't taped all the way down. Now at this point, before this goes in, I'm going to put some glue onto the end here. And we're gonna pull the hook wrap through. Okay, so now it's wedged in there. It doesn't matter if you can see it just a little bit. I'm gonna pull that through just a little bit more to disguise it. Okay, and then once it's through, that's your top. We now need to take tweezers here and give it a little bend. Just move the tweezers along a little bit so that this can curve down. It's really strange. When you look at the real flower, that is what happens. Now, what I find often is you get this far and then you start to fiddle with the wire and that's what makes the flower break off the wire. So you just have to be as careful as you possibly can. And that's ready to dry now. Just feel like I want to bring this head of the flower up just slightly. Double check that you have actually got the top two petals facing up towards the ceiling. So quite a lot in there to follow, but I'm going to make alongside you as well now. I'm just going to show you a bit more speeded up uh, the process again. So one centimeter ball of flower paste, roll in or press in a cone shape and hold on to the narrow end. Take the five sided tips, the one with the five ridges where it tapers and then press that into about halfway, pressing along the side of the tool so that that helps create the markings that you need. Just hold the scissors in one position and turn your shape to cut. That way you should get straighter petals. And then we can open these up, ready to round off. So I'm just rounding the edges. And then I'm going to put my finger on top of my thumb underneath and just flatten the petals. This just does some of the work for you. Now, um, I would say when you try and make uneven petals, so you've got a larger one, they all end up the same thickness, but so this is fairly even. Have a look around, see if you can find one that's thicker and fatter than the others. So this one, I'm gonna make my bottom bigger, wider petal. So cornflower onto my knuckle. If you're right-handed, the cornflower will go onto your left knuckle. And then if we take the tool, so you can use cocktail stick, kebab stick, or your silk veining tool, your petal veiner thriller. Um, and I'm just gonna hold, press it onto the center of the petal, but the point is facing behind me, it's up at an angle. So you're only thinning the edge, probably the first 
half a centimetre of this petal. It's almost like your finger needs conditioning before you can do this without it sticking because that's torn a little bit. I'm going to go with it because I think that looks all right. So again, from one center to center to the um, outside, nice good press and thin. More cornflower. Do the other one that's opposite. So these two need to match in size. More cornflower. Now that's one of the top petals. And then we do the last one to match this one, cornflower. You're pressing it against the gristly part of or the knuckly part of your finger. Um, it can feel a little bit uncomfortable. So after a while, you just need to maybe give it a rest because it's it can make it sore. Okay. Now, if you find that you've ended up extending your petal because it got stuck and then stretched, you can fix that just by trimming. And at this point, we use the back of the paintbrush, or if you are using this tool, or it could be a kebab stick, the pointy end of the kebab stick would work. But we're just going to um, make an indent in the center here, remembering that this is my bottom widest petal. And then these are my side and this is my top. So I'm just going to press my tool into here. It's actually pressed in at a bit of an angle. You could take advantage of that tool holding your flower and just neaten off the back so it becomes a little bit pointed. Come out and then you're back to they're just going to curl back a fraction, so just curling them back. They can overlap in the middle, one over the other slightly. These two side ones, if you bring them forward and then curl them backwards and just push them up a little bit because they will be further forward than the two here, which are your back petals, and up a bit, so they're overlapping. So this here is overlapping this one. And these two are overlapping a little bit. And then you've got your bottom petal, which is drying out a little bit now, so I have to be careful. So that's the shape of your pansy. Now at this point we can Threadle through the wire. So this is pre taped and it's got the hook in the end. So we're just going to put the unhooked end into the hole you've made, go in by about half a centimeter, and then, well, maybe just less than that, and then um, allow it to come in at the top, come out at the top here. So these are the top two petals just pushing through. As you hit the tape, give it a little twist to avoid too much resistance. And just take care with this because as you feed it on, the hole might get bigger. And then we're going to put some glue on the hooked end. Which on this one, I've actually covered with the tape. And then we can carefully feed that through until you almost can't see it. So with the tape covered over the hook, which is an option, you can see now that that's filling the center a little bit. And now we come to the back and we need to make this wire here come down with a little bit of a curve. So as gently as you possibly can, just clamp and tweak. Travel just a little way up the wire. We, we don't want a sharp bend.
Make that come down a bit more. So checking that the back petals are at the top, the side petals, this is the bottom petal. And when you look at the back, you can see the wires come out of the top. This is going to be covered by a calyx later on. And then uh, we've got the wire traveling down. A uh, centimeter and a half diameter on this. You could use a smaller one if you wanted to. That's just a centimeter. Um, and this is for the back, the calyx for the back of the flower. And I'll just make sure that my paste is nicely warmed up. We'll put a little bit of corn flour down just to stop it from sticking. You'll know whether you need the corn flour on there because it'll just feel like it's going to stick right. This is, I've put quite a lot of green in here to get my shades. Um, pansies can have more spring green. <laughs> Let's give it a good dusting on the on the rolling pin as well, nice and thin. Oh dear, oh me! That's what happens when you put a lot of colour in? Okay, so it's really thin. It's petal thin. Turn it over so that you've got the drier cut out part, drier part on the bottom side. It just gives a crisper cut and then we'll press down and cut. Now, if you can roll a piece and cut the shapes that you need, the number of shapes that you need, then that is going to help you uh, just speed things up. While it's in the cutter, just run your finger along the edges just to make sure that it's uh, cut through. And then anything you've got that will allow you to poke this out. So I've got just a leaf veining tool here. We could use a cocktail stick, um, even that's not fitting into this one. So the pointed end of a cocktail stick drawing down to the pointed end in the cutter and just press that out. So you've got a nice little calyx. My, the rest of my paste, just so it doesn't dry out, I'm just gonna pop that under a piece of plastic. I can cut my other four shapes out of there in a minute. <laughs> And then um, we can take one of our flowers, a little bit of glue, and that glue is going to go just over the top of where the wire enters the flower, so here, but only a little bit of glue because we don't want it to start to melt. There's no extra work to do on this calyx. It's just a simple case of picking it up laying it onto so that the center of the calyx is exactly on the wire that's as it goes into the flower and then just between your finger and thumb you give it one little press on and that is it okay now if you want to I feel like I want to maybe curl that back a little bit but it does become fragile if it's not attached okay so any kind of loose ends could possibly break off, but that is as easy as anything. So we've got five to put on. I'll just reset that so you can see that a bit more closely. We've got one on each flower. I feel like I want to turn this a little bit more down. There, that's it. Okay, so for the leaves for the pansy, they're different sizes. You can use a rose cutter instead of the oak leaf shapes. Um, but I'm also using a garden rose veiner because the texture is very similar. 28 gauge wire. So I'll just take a little bit of the same colored green paste that we've been working with. And a bit of corn flour on my largest ridge. And we'll just make like a fat sausage. Now, if you're using a wide cutter, then it's probably a good idea to get the width of your paste first. I'm just going to roll this sideways. 
and then it doesn't matter how long we roll. But these need to be nice and thin, so roll your paste thin. And then we'll just remove the paste. Turn it over so you can see the ridge. It's always a good idea to see to be able to see what you're what you're cutting. So then with the oak leaf, or if you're using the rose uh, leaf, the bottom here is going to line up at the base of the ridge and then line it up centrally so that the ridge is in the middle. And then we'll give that a little bit of rub. If you're worried about it sticking in the cutter, then put some corn flour on to the cutter before you use it. Um, this one's a little bit stuck, so I'm just going to go in at the bottom and reveal my shape. Now, before we do anything else, we need to put the wire in. So I've got a third length 28 gauge wire, and I'm just going to put this nice straight end into my ridge and just have my finger and thumb top and bottom on the ridge and apply a bit of pinching pressure as you push through so it forces the wire to stay in there and if you feel like it's coming out at any point stop reposition the wire and then carry on to feed and the wire's gone in almost to the top so at this point I'm going to use my cutting wheel because the um, pansy leaf has not got as much kind of scalloping around the side and it's better to trim before you put it in the veiner so I'm just taking a bit off those extra edges this is why if you've got a rose leaf what you can do is take the serrated just trim the serrated part off in the same way okay so you've just got a little bit of um movement then we can pop it into your leaf veiner. A little bit of corn flour so that doesn't sit, stick. And then we can, as you're looking at the garden rose veiner, GR here, the indented part here is going to become the back of the leaf. So I'm going to put my ridge face down on the left hand side here. Close up the veiner. Press quite firm and release. Try not to wiggle your hand because you don't want it to distort the wire. So that will give me the texture of the, of, of the rose leaf, but I'm probably going to want to change that texture slightly. So you can use a veining tool or a cutting wheel to draw in some additional lines. So my veining tool here, you can use a foam pad in fact, I will just put this onto the foam pad just so you can see. Just want something a bit soft underneath. If you haven't got your foam pad to hand, you can use your palm. But following the line of the texture that you've already pressed in, I'm just going to draw in some additional lines. So if you're using a cutting wheel, use the small end and just draw them in. Try not to cut through. Work on a soft surface. And that just will um, give you more texture, more lines. And then the final bit would be to use your bone modeling tool, probably the large end for this, and just pinch the very, very edge. Try not to hold on to the wire, but you might need to just bring the leaf back into play if it shifts too far. But you just want to thin the edges slightly. They are closed up slightly in the center. So I'm just going to draw my finger and thumb down the back here so that it closes up. More important down the bottom here. And then they are curled a fraction as well. So we're curling them backwards a fraction. Now, if you've only got the one size, what you can do is you can trim these to make them smaller or some pansies are uh, more plump, more fat than they are long. So if you want to change the look of your leaf or make it smaller, then you can just either use a different cutter or you can trim to make them smaller. Uh, okay, so you don't have to go out and buy loads of cutters. But that, they're very nondescript. They're quite boring, really, in shape and look. 
um, but they are a nice finish to the uh, arrangement in the pot. So I've made about eight or nine different sized ones. The, I've got a little loose one here, which I just wanted to bring. It's a little bit chipped, but on here you can see I've got violet. So you could use some very old colors here, but you can use deep purple. You could add a bit of plum to blue to get deep purple. So your cornflower blue and plum mixed together will give you deep purple. More plum gives you great violet. So if you want more of a kind of a plummy purple as opposed to a bluey purple, um, then you can just vary the amount of plum you put in there. This is lemon yellow. The, these side bits are white. And then I've got a fine brush with some black petal dust mixed with alcohol. And that's what I'm going to use to colour. Uh, my flower. So they are fragile. That's the thing. You've got to be so careful, especially if they're still wet. The green, you won't need to colour much at all, but you might want to take a little bit of green petal dust onto the back calyx. So I'll show you that in a moment. And the leaves are quite straightforward. They, they um, just need a little bit of green just to take the cornflower off, because if your shade is green enough, then, uh, then it, would, it will work. So what I've got here is I've got a tissue with my um, deep purple in. I'm just going to check what's happening to this brush. Um, I've got my lemon yellow in there as well. Because my lightest color is the yellow, I need to start with my yellow. The reason for that is because when you color, inevitably some of that yellow is going to transfer onto the rest of the petals. If you started with the purple first, the same will happen. But then if you try and put your yellow on, it won't be yellow anymore. So start by coloring the lightest shade. So I've got some lemon yellow petal dust worked into my brush here. And then we can just gently brush that, starting from the outside edge in, just brush that color on. Taking your time, trying not to irritate the flower too much. Now, if you find that your flower is starting to move and you're worried that it's going to be uh, coming off the stem, then it might be a good idea to actually stop and um, wait until this pet, this, the flower is dry before you colour. Okay, so I'm just catching a little bit of yellow onto the base. It's concentrated around this area and this part here I haven't coloured. It's going to be white. And then we can turn that over and do a little bit on the back side as well. So again, very, very gently because you've you've really only got any you've only got just the tip of the top of the petal to support with your finger on this. Um, since it's I mean this does feel like it's holding, so that's fine. And then um, we're going to cover some color, some purple onto our top two petals, these two here. So the yellow goes on the beard, the widest petal, the bottom petal. Now, when you're working with the purple color, try and work it into the brush a little bit so that you don't have lots of loose petal dust flicking. I'm just holding onto this wire here just to help it stop bouncing. And again, we're going to draw the color from the outside edge down. So that's going to give you like a burnt edge, like a nice deep colored edge of the petal, and then a blush of purple coming onto the flower. And just, just remember, try and work the color onto the brush before you start dusting. If you end up with lots of loose petal dust, don't worry. I mean, I call that dirty dusting. And the reason I, it, it's a thing is because if you want rustic looking flowers, then um, loose petal dust dropped onto the blossom is absolutely fine. As long as you find some way of setting the color onto the flower paste. And we do that by steaming. So if we've got loose dust, like I have here, um, there's a little bit of loose dust in and around here. That's okay, as long as I steam the flower before I try and put it onto, the, in, uh, onto the, its final resting place or onto a cake. And here you can see that it's got quite a deep edge. That's where excess petal dust is just um, sat on the edge of the petals that I'm dusting. Um, so we can just work that in as well. 
So now we've got a really pretty kind of little faded um, look. You know, so it's going from dark purple into um, more faded in the center. Now, the last thing to do on there is to find yourself a fine brush, something that comes to a nice point. And I've got a little bit of alcohol, a little bit of gin or vodka, something clear. We'll just drop that into my paint palette. And in here, I've got black petal dust. If you want, you can actually use the spectral paste colors, the licorice or the black extra will work. Um, and those you can paint straight on, but just bear in mind that they don't dry very quickly. You can mix them with some alcohol, which will help them dry. Um, and this is gonna be something that is just a little bit thicker than watercolor. And once I've loaded the brush up, what I'm doing on the surface is actually twisting the brush so that it comes to a point. And then my idea here is we need to just simply lay the brush on it or draw fine lines just with the tip of the brush. So maybe practice. Um, if we just lay, I think it will be too fat actually. So we'll just, we'll just brush gently. So I'm gonna start by creating the gentle lines just fine lines, just by using the tip of the brush. So the lines on here will maybe be longer at the bottom. Um, try and avoid overpainting because sometimes it lifts the color. And then we can do a couple, just like whiskers on the sides. And just reload your brush. And I'm feeling like that needs to be flared out just a little bit. The more defined you try and be with this, the worse it looks. Okay, so that's your little blossom or your violet. So on the back, I'm going to take a little bit of my green and I'm just going to brush that over the top. Just it's going to catch maybe a little bit on the uh, white of the back, but otherwise that's all we would need to do to our violet to finish it off. Good enough to eat. Uh, just quickly showing you on these leaves, they're pretty much colored. I've got a little bit, it's just moss green here, but all I'm doing is just brushing that over. They're very monotone. There's no shading to it at all, but I just want to take the corn flower off. So I'm just doing that using my brush with a little bit of green color. And every uh, leaf needs to be taped down. So what I'm gonna do is let you uh, have a go at um, doing your coloring. And then I'm gonna come back in a short while and show you how it's put into the pot. So what I'm gonna show you is just um, how to pop, how, how to create the earth. And you don't have to have brown paste. It could just be an old bit of paste, any color. And it doesn't have to be particularly well warmed up either. So we're just gonna make that into a cone shape, drop that into the pot. This one, I probably need a little bit more than this, but I'll, um, I'll show you how to do it anyway. And then um, I've got a pot prepared here that I can put this in. So you'd get that so it fills your pot. This is quite low down in there. You want maybe to fill up to about a centimeter well, maybe half a centimeter from the top because all clearly you're not watering it so it doesn't matter so you can go higher up if you want to um, but to get the texture all i've done is used my tweezers and simply pinched out uh, the texture so just open and close your tweezers poking in so poking close pull up open poke in close pull up and so on and just work your way around the whole of the top surface so this would be higher, okay? I was just showing you how. So that would just keep going until you're happy with the texture. Some of the bits might pull off, well, that's fine because it can be loose soil. And then I've used brown petal dust, or you can make your own brown petal dust by using green and red, a bit of black if you want it dark. And I've just 
used my brush just to daub that over. So literally just work it in. Um, maybe use an old brush because sometimes it can make the brush kind of spray out, damage the bristles. So I've just worked, literally work it in. And you can see here that I've got a bit of blue and that's because I used pale blue petal dust for this is what I had left over. So just work the color in until you're happy with the shading. And then it's just a case of assembling. So you might decide that you need to shorten your flowers. If I hold this up against the pot, it's quite tall. And pansies are taller than the leaves, but they're not as tall. So just hold it up against the side of the pot and then decide how, how tall you want that to be. And if you hold the wire down the bottom and just gently ease that in. Okay, so that would be my first one maybe. And you want them to go in uh, at least by about an inch and have some tall and some short. So I've got some shorter ones here. They don't all have to come from the same point. If you've used 33 gauge wires, they might be a little bit trickier to put in. So you might want some help with the tweezers. I'm just gonna change that because uh, those are thinner wires, these are thicker wires. So we're just gonna push those in. You won't have as much trouble as this because your paste is uh, not dry. And this paste here is fairly dry. It's an old, old batch where I've just pulled all my leaves out of. So you would arrange all your flowers first, kind of fairly evenly spaced around the center of the pot. <laughs> You know, I'm going to cheat a little bit here because this is old paste. I'm just going to press my cocktail stick in. Just so I can get these in. Oh dear. Right. Plan B. Let's work with this one. But do make it come up to the soil, come up to quite high up on the pot. You can see how much easier that is to get these in. So we've got five flowers going in. Or three, so it's quite quick, cute with three. I just need to get them in far enough so that they don't flop. And as you're pushing them in, just make sure the wire doesn't bend. It can be pointing in different directions, but mostly towards the sun. That one's not happy, is it? Try another one. And then once you've got all your flowers in, you can pop in your leaves. So the leaves themselves, they need to be taped down. And they need to be quite short. So I've trimmed 
can see I've trimmed them to about two inches. But make sure that you've got twisted tape on them because once they're in, some of the stem will show a little bit. So this is trimmed to about two inches. And we can just start to feed that in. And the leaves are going to grow around the flower stems. So again, they're not all in the center. Just use your tweezers to help lever or ease the leaves in, leaving probably about a centimeter of stem. So they're quite tight in there. It's interesting on screen, this looks like moss. You could put moss in there, but of course, I mean, this flower pot, you need to make absolutely sure it was clean if you were gonna put this on a cake. So we're just gonna pop another one in there. Try and encourage the flowers to face a similar way. That one doesn't want to play ball, he's in a mood. So again, just a little twist of tape. Can bend the leaf just a little bit so it's at an angle and then in. So when I'm cutting, it's pretty much the height of the pot. And that way we've got control over how far we can push it in. Just be careful when you're doing this that you don't handle them in an awkward way like I had handled this one because they will snap. So this one needs to be shortened just a little bit more because it's hitting the bottom before it's far enough in. Just a couple more. So I had about eight going in here. Small ones put more in the center, bigger ones more towards the outside and you can overlap them. So if I just show you what I've tried to do there, I'll just carry on filling that up until, until I'm happy. This one is trying to swing, it's got a mind of its own. But you can see very quickly, I mean, that's only with four leaves. It's um, looking quite pretty. So I'll probably put a couple more leaves in. So the very last thing uh, is to steam. Now, if you're assembling this on a mound on a cake, you better to steam each flower and leaf separately just to make sure that it is actually um, all the color is set and not going to come off. This does not want to play this one. So with the steamer, I'm just going to turn this on. It, um, it's a steamer for cake, but I know uh, Sandy found a, a steamer for about £15, which actually for clothes, but it looks just like this. And because it hasn't got the word cake on it, it's cheap. So I've just set the steamer off. It doesn't have a thermostat, so it will not switch off. It will boil until it's got no water left. So just remember that, otherwise it might boil dry. And I cannot do it over it. So this has only got half the amount of water in. And as soon as that starts, that's finished boiling or starts boiling, you can see it all bubbling here. That's the point where the steam's going to come out and um, we can steam our flowers. Now it is quite quick ferocious, so be careful. Uh, don't do it too long, otherwise you'll end up with paste. And we're after something that looks a little bit gossy. And that will 
it starts to melt the paste a little bit. And as it sets, it grabs on, it will hold on to your loose petal dust. And then you can be a bit more confident about putting your flowers onto your cake without all the dust going everywhere. It also makes the colours much more vibrant. So I'm just looking to see if we can find a shiny. I haven't really gone overly shiny. I've tried not to be too, too um, noisy violet. Pretty. Okay, so I uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Take good care. Bye-bye for now.